So I have a very simple example here where we're going to put in a skewed bridge just to just to illustrate some of the concepts that we might use. And the first thing I've done here is I have a corridor um, drawn for my roadway in a separate DGN. We'll see in a second. I have a corridor that's just my bridge segment segment through this area here. So what I want to do with my mainline corridor here is I want to clip it out and I want it to be skewed, you know, with the skew of the bridge. So I have the the extents of the bridge slab drawn in a DGN. I'm going to turn that reference on here. And so this area here is the bridge slab. So this is the area I want to cut out. And we'll notice it's at a skew angle there. So all I'm going to do is go to the corridor tools. I'm going to, in corridor clipping, choose add a clipping reference. I'm going to pick my corridor to add it to. And then I'm going to select my clipping reference to clip that out, reset, and um, it will clip out. So I don't have to do any kind of skews in my templates. I don't have to use secondary alignments or anything. Um, if I just model my roadway through the full area of the bridge and then clip out the extents of the bridge as a, as a clipping reference, it'll handle the skew for me and my, um, my roadway model will be good and clipped out at a skew. So now I've switched over to the DGN that has my bridge section modeled in it. And we'll just take a look at that here real quick. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to turn on the reference that has that bridge slab uh, drawn out in it. And we're going to do some clipping. Now, you'll notice that the shape I used to clip out the mainline corridor was this internal one. So I added these, um, these two external shapes here to clip out the extents of the bridge. So all I did when I modeled the bridge section is I started the start station of the template drop before the, um, before the actual extents of the slab and I extended the template drop past the end of it and I made sure that my shapes encased the whole bridge section. So I'm going to do the same thing now that I have that drawn. I'm going to go and add a corridor clipping reference to this corridor here. And the first clipping reference is going to be the part that clips off the beginning, and then the second one clips off the end of the bridge. I'm going to reset to complete. So now my corridor and my bridge section are both clipped correctly at the skew angle. Um, and the next thing I'll do is go into the abutments DGN and start modeling the abutments. Okay, so now I'm in a DGN file where I want to draw my abutments. And what I'm going to do is um, I have referenced in the existing ground so those abutments can target it. I also have a, uh, referenced in my corridor for my roadway, which I'm going to use to snap a 3D control line here to run my um, template along where the abutment might be. And so what I'm going to do, again, this is a simple example. I'm, I haven't actually drawn in any of the actual structural um, location of the abutments. You're going to have some you know, where your, your peer, the top of your pier or top of your abutment. So um, this is just a concept you can use once you know the location of those. But I'm going to just place a smart line here in 3D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap to um, the elements of my corridor. And I'm going to come back, since this was clipped at a skew, I'm going to come back a distance so that when I run a slope down, it's going to at least overlap and I won't have any gap here for where it's skewed. So I'm going to place my first point on my abutment there. And again, I'm just drawing a 3D smart line in graphics there. I'm going to continue to snap um, on the graphics of the corridor and reset when I'm done there. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Start at the top. We'll start there. The overlap is going to be handled through clipping. Again, we're going to clip with the abutments. Okay, so once my 3D line is drawn there, I'm going to turn off the reference for the corridor. And we see I have our 3D corridor graphics. The other thing I'm going to do just real quick is I'm going to put those on a um, temporary level that we can turn off when we're done. So I'm just going to pick one um, that I don't care to use. Bridge pair, I'm not using that anywhere right now. And we'll add this one on there as well. Okay, uh, in order to run a linear template around, I want to actually create some civil geometry from that. So I'm going to come to the um, model detailing tool and I'm going to run 
under the 3D elements, I'm going to run the plan by 3D element tool. And for future definitions, I'm going to look in here and I'm going to, um, we'll just pick a, um, like a geom secondary, just some other feature definition to um, get it to be a, a different level than the graphics I've drawn. Okay, I'm going to um, locate the two 3D elements. And when I do that, it's going to create a 2D geometry here for me. And it's going to um, create a profile for that based off of the elevations here in the 3D alignment. So once I'm done with that, I can come to my um, 2D file. And I can turn off the reference attachment in there as well. I see there's my abutments. And then the last thing I'm going to do both in uh, 2D and 3D is I'm going to turn off that bridge pier alignment so that the original graphics that I used um, were not, um, not displaying. And we will do it over here as well. Okay, so what I have here is a good um, civil geometry element that I can apply my template along. And that's going to be the last step I do here. I'm going to come to, again, that model detailing apply linear template. When that comes up, I'm going to pick the template real quick that I want to drop, and that is in the in conditions. I'm just going to do a, a fill two to one um, in condition around the edge of that. So locate my element. That's going to be the alignment that I created, my template. I'm going to hit the Alt key to lock it to the start and to the end, and then select the side. And I'm going to do the same thing up for the right side of the bridge. Okay, so now I have my abutment uh, slopes drawn there. I can come back into the um, corridor model and I can put all three, the corridor, the bridge, and the abutments in there and take a look at the 3D model. Okay, so now I'm back in the original corridor model that we started off in. We clipped out the bridge section there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reference in that abutment start file that we were just in where we created our abutments. So I'm going to choose abutment start and say OK and OK. It'll reference it in 2D and in 3D. And we can see if we zoom over in 3D that those abutment slopes are good. Um, just as we modeled them. Then the last thing I'll do is reference in the bridge DGN file. So we'll say tools attach. And that bridge file that we worked on was this uh, mainline bridge start. Say OK. And so there we have our um, 3D model of our bridge uh, components. Again, they're clipped at a skew angle. Our roadway is also clipped at a skew angle. And then we also um, cut these bridge abutments. You'll see that I do have that gap that I was talking about, so I want to move the start alignment of that station back a little bit further. Last thing I want to do to clean that up is I want to add a clipping corridor so our, my abutments can clip out these slopes on there. I might want to do some transitioning over here on the right side because I have a shallower slope up there and I was running a two to one slope, or I might want to uh, put the same in condition in maybe that I used on my roadway, but this is just a simple example to try and show some concepts that we can use.